This is being recorded. I'll hold it now. I don't actually just automatically record. I'm recording it online too in, in Zoom. So, um, okay, so what we're talking about is uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Um, I did a, pre a presentation previously, but uh, this is updated. There's been a lot of changes. So, um, anyways, so I started looking into Bitcoin. In uh, 2015, I set up a Coinbase account. I bought Bitcoin on Coinbase when all they had available was just Bitcoin. <laughs> and I bought uh, Bitcoin prior to the halving in July of 2016. Since then, Coinbase has expanded to uh, some other cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Litecoin, and others. Oh, that reminds me, why don't I... Uh, This is the Coinbase dashboard. So we'll go back. Anyways, um, I sold 11 Ethereum in September of 2016 for around $7. Ethereum is now over $180, was up as high as $1,200. So it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Um, I currently own Ethereum, Bitcoin, Bytecoin, Digibytes, Litecoin, Komodo, Ethereum tokens. And so uh, Ethereum tokens are, um, they're cryptocurrencies, but they're based on Ethereum. And, and there's, there's um, probably hundreds of those. Um, anyways, um, Veritasium, Pillar, Theta, OMG, and others. And I buy cryptos at every opportunity. I'm probably gonna buy some here, maybe um, tomorrow or Monday, because uh, it seems to be moving right now. Um, at common law, only gold or silver are legal tender. And so if you want common law, then you have to have lawful money, okay? That is absolutely crucial. And so, um, Bitcoin is much closer to lawful money than Federal Reserve notes, but it's still not lawful money, technically. Um, although some people say that Bitcoin is, represents work that was performed, which if you think about it, um, um, a labor certificate, I actually have a document um, that I um, recorded uh, called the Certificates of Labor, in other words, if you do ten dollars worth of labor, um, then then you should be able to uh, whoever you work for ought to be able to make a certificate saying that you did ten dollars worth of labor. You ought to be able to take it to the bank, and then they ought to give you ten dollars in in labor certificates. And that should be because labor is valuable; it's real, um, and it should work. But um, under the that doesn't put any power in the hands of the bankster thieves. So, uh, but that is a good theory, anyways. Uh, anyways, so, so, but at common law, only gold or silver are legal tender. Um, now, as far as fake uh, money is concerned, uh, there's a distinction between a debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. In other words, when you use Federal Reserve notes, you discharge your debts with limited liability. Discharge falls under the law of nations or international law. So you take yourself by using Federal Reserve notes, you're taking yourself out of common law, out of your Republican form of government, and you're putting yourself under international law, which is the Roman cult. And so, um, and they just, because um, the Federal Reserve notes are legal tender, this is how insidiously evil this whole system is because, um, when you use federal, they can presume 
because Federal Reserve notes are legal tender, they presume that that's what you use unless you specify otherwise. So you have to specify. If otherwise, they'll presume you use the fake money and um, then uh, you, you're in international law and you don't have any rights and it just kind of goes from there. That's the reason there's no justice in the courts. They do whatever they feel like doing. Um, don't get me going. Copies of these documents can be found in my private groups at groups.io and also uh, at administering your public groups, uh, public servants at groups.io and also uh, administering your public servants at Yahoo and Google and on my website. Um, actually, the documents aren't on Yahoo or Google anymore. Uh, they're just on the groups.io uh, website and on my website. They're available for free. Um, that's www.sovereigntyinternational.fyi. For a complete set of YouTube videos with private information, shares a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forms, contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. And donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin. Um, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the fake money, the military script, the Federal Reserve notes, the PayPal gifts, the checks, the money orders. Um, but uh, I, I, uh, Bitcoin is preferred over those. Anyway, send me an email for particulars. This is the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, located at 48 Stat 337. As section 15, it says, as used in this act, the term United States means government of the United States, and the term currency of the United States means currency, which is legal tender in the United States, and includes United States notes and Federal Reserve notes. In other words, think about it. Federal Reserve notes are meant for internal use of the government only. And so, again, all statutes are international law. You're putting yourself into international law by using Federal Reserve notes, by using the fake money. Forced loans of 1862 and 1863 in the form of legal tender notes were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. They formed a part of the public debt of the United States, okay? Well, again, 1862 and 1863, it was a military dictatorship, a military despotism, and um, they were uh, forcing, okay, Federal Reserve notes at them, and in those days it was called U.S. Treasury notes. And so anybody that worked for the government got paid in a U.S. Treasury note. And that's how Lincoln financed the Civil War. I think he printed $400 million worth of U.S. Treasury notes. The bankster thieves uh, offered to loan him some of their fake money, um, but he said he couldn't do that. That's probably why they killed him. Um, but at the bottom line is, is they're fake money. Federal Reserve notes are commercial paper. Federal Reserve notes are a forced loan. Federal Reserve notes are IOUs. All commercial paper falls in two categories. It's either a promissory note or an IOU. I don't care, stocks, bonds, anything you want to have is either going to be a promissory note or an IOU. And a requirement for a promissory note is it has to have a promise to pay. If it doesn't have a promise to pay, then it's not a promissory note. And therefore, it by definition, it's an IOU. And so Federal Reserve notes are IOUs. They used to have gold certificates and silver certificates. And those were promissory notes because it said on them that you could go get some gold or silver coin. Um, this is General Orders 100, which is the Libra Code, Article 37. The United States acknowledge and protect in hostile countries occupied by them, religion and morality, strictly private property, the persons of the inhabitants, especially those of women, and the sacredness of domestic relations. Offenses to the contrary shall be rigorously punished. This rule does not interfere with the right of the victorious invader to tax the people or their property to levy forced loans. And so again, the Libra Code is international law. The law of war is international law. It's law of nations or international law. Those are both convertible phrases. They both mean the same thing. In this is Chisholm versus Georgia. In despotic governments, the government has usurped in a similar manner both upon the state and the people. Hence, all arbitrary doctrines and pretensions concerning the supreme, absolute, and incontrollable power of government. And each man is degraded from the prime rank which he ought to hold in human affairs. In the latter, the state as well as the man is degraded. So they're talking both upon the state and the people. So um, 
in despotic governments, the state as well as the man is degraded. Of both degradations, striking instances occur in history, in politics, and in common life. And that's Chisholm versus Georgia, 2 Dallas, 419 at page 461. Uh, banknotes constitute a large and convenient part of the currency of our country, and by common consent, Federal Reserve notes, if you think about it, are banknotes. It's exactly what they are. Serve to a great extent all the purposes of coin in themselves. They are not money, for they are not a legal tender. Well, they are a legal tender now because Congress said so. And yet they are good tender, less specifically objected to as being notes merely and not money. No one has to accept a bank note. And I always tell people when I spend these things, I tell them, well, you know, uh, uh, nobody has to accept this, but since you took my bank notes, I'll take yours. They subserve the purposes of money in the ordinary business of life by the mutual consent of the parties of a contract, not by the binding force of any common usage, for the party to whom they are maybe tendered has an undoubted right to refuse accepting them as money. Cryptocurrency is not a forced loan. Anything can be used as a medium of exchange as long as we agree to it. It's called barter. But in fact and in law, such statutes are intended to be applied to those who are here as residents in this state under the Interstate Commerce Clause of the Federal Constitution and the so-called 14th Amendment. And that's found in United States versus United Mine Workers of America, U.S. Supreme Court, 1947. So law of nations is international law. There's convertible phrases. The banks operate under international law. The military despotism is under international law. The uniform co commercial code is called, another word, is private international law. All codes, rules, and regulations are international law. But in considering the question before us, it must be borne in mind that there is no law of nations standing between the people of the United States and their government. If you have a Republican form of government, then the government is supposed to protect you from international law. When these judicial whores assault you with their statutes, they perjuring their oath because Article 4, Section 4 of the Federal Constitution says you're entitled to a Republican form of government and a republic does not include international law. And so they're perjuring the world because they're denying you a republican form of government. The powers of the government and the rights of the citizens under it are positive practical regulations plainly written down. The people of the United States have delegated to it certain enumerated powers and forbidden it to exercise others. Dred Scott versus Sanford, U.S. Supreme Court. The forced loans of 1862 and 1863 in the form of legal tender notes were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. So the national government was supreme. So it's not a federal government anymore. It's a national government if you're one of the slaves. They form a part of the public debt of the United States. That's Juilliard versus Greenman, again, the US Supreme Court. Employees during the Civil War um, they paid government employees with treasury notes. Government employees were forced to loan the government money. When government employees are paid with treasury notes or bank notes, it's a forced loan. Both are government debts. Forced loans is probably the single most important thing for a military despotism. It makes it so that the courts presume that you do not pay a debt. It makes it so everyone is paupers. Because if you, I don't care how many Federal Reserve notes you got in your wallet, if that's all you got, you don't have anything. You are a pauper. Paupers have no rights at common law, except what they allow you to have. Money, according to Norman France, gold is the money of kings, silver is the money of gentlemen, barter is the money of peasants, debt is the money of slaves. And that's what we have. Again, this is one I said before, there is a distinction between a debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though I divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. 
When you use Federal Reserve notes, you're discharging debt with limited liability. The Federal Reserve was set up under the insurance laws of the United States. Federal Reserve notes are defined as worthless insurance script. Anything purchased with ins worthless insurance script is the property of the issuer of the script. Think about it. If you're having your wallet insurance script and you buy something with it, well, it belongs to the boss, belongs to the owner. Taxes are a fee for using the private money system. Under Title 18, United States Code, Section 8, obligation or other security of the United States defined. The term obligation or other security of the United States includes all bonds, certificates of indebtedness, national bank currency, Federal Reserve notes, Federal Reserve bank notes, coupons, United States notes, treasury notes. So all of that stuff, including canceled stamps, are obligations of the United States. And then if you go to 31 USC, section 3124, stocks and obligations of the United States government are exempt from taxation. So at, that actually goes back to a case called Brown versus Franchise Tax Board in California, California Supreme Court. And, and, and I'm gonna be doing another video if we have time here about my form 1020. Um, that kind of goes into a way that you can um, basically make tax collectors go away. Anyways, moving on. So recently, because of this pandemic and uh, 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 hoax, um, there's been hyper, makes you wonder, they're doing a $2 trillion stimulus package um, that was passed and another $2 trillion infrastructure stimulus package was proposed. They say there's gonna be $6 trillion spent in total. The Democrats are proposing $2,000 a month for each man or woman until the economy comes back, which, you know, I, I think we're going into a great depression. I guess we'll see. Anyways, so the question is, is are we going to get hyperinflation? You know, it's hard to say. No one really knows until it happens. And the reason is, is because all of the stimulus is going to be paid to anyone with a social security number on the form, in the form of Federal Reserve notes. Remember, Federal Reserve notes are forced loans. And under Title V United States Code, Section 552 AA 13, the term federal personnel means officers and employees of the government of the United States and individuals entitled to receive immediate or deferred retirement benefits under any retirement program of the government of the United States. That means anyone with a social security number. And what they're making, they're doing it through the IRS, which means that you don't get anything unless you provide a social security number, which means that you got to say, I'm, I'm one of the government employees. I'm one of the slaves. Hyperinflation is caused by the velocity of the currency. Quantitative easing failed to cause hyperinflation because they gave it to the banksters who invented it, invested it in stocks, and mostly the stocks inflated. Okay, if you remember all that, that during the Obama administration, it was the stock market that was going up and maybe housing prices and stuff, but it was, it was mostly given to the bankster thieves. Velocity is the number of times currency changes hands. In Weimar, Germany, hyperinflation, people would run to the store with a wheelbarrow full of money and nothing would be there to buy. In hyperinflation, what happens is supply lines break down because truckers, truckers can't make money. They, uh, because they have to do it on a, based on a contract. And so that the price of the contract has to be decided before the trucker picks up the load. And by the time he delivers it, it's inflated uh, into nothing. And so he, they lose money. And so the supply lines break down is what happens. And so um, that's what happens when you get hyperinflation. Velocity is the number of times the money changes hands. And so the, the faster you run to the store to spend that money and get rid of it, that's like big time velocity. If we do get hyperinflation, the cities will be the absolute worst place to be. Because of the lockdown, farmers are destroying milk and other crops because the restaurants are closed and they're not able to sell it. And let's face it, milk has limited time. You have to use it up in a certain period of time or it goes bad. 
There have been major crop failures in the last three years in a row. It's a recipe for food prices to go up a lot. Now, how much? I don't know, but they're saying that it's a recipe possibly for some serious inflation. Whether it turns into hyperinflation or not depends on how fast people run to spend it. That's really what it comes down to. Now, um, you know, with this, with this uh, 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 stimulus that everybody's getting paid, um, it depends on how fast people spend it. Right now, the stores are closed, so people aren't spending it that fast. But if it gets to the point that, uh, that it starts inflating it into nothing, people see that happening, they're going to get rid of it. And then what will happen is people have a lot of money in the bank and retirement programs and elsewhere. They'll be pulling it out of there and spending it as fast as they possibly can. Anyways, so let's talk about cryptocurrencies a little bit and why cryptocurrencies are way better than the current fake money system. Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency that was created in 2008. Bitcoin, um, it was decided when Bitcoin was created that there would be 21 million coins maximum ever made. There are thousands of cryptocurrencies now, and let me show you a website. This one's uh, Coin Market Cap, and if you see my cursor up in the left-hand corner, at this one, Crypt Coin Market Cap tracks. 5,394 currencies in 21,602 markets. So there are a lot of cryptocurrencies. Now the top 100 are probably the best, but I actually have uh, uh, several cryptocurrencies that are not in the top 100. Um, but these are the, if you're, it's, I'm not really, it's moving pretty fast, so it's hard to see. There's Theta, right there, it's number 56. OMG, that's another one that I own, that's number 57. Um, there's, there's a bunch of them here. Komodo, that's another one I earn, that's number 67. That's the one I own, I should say. Steam, I own Steam, that's number 72. Um, so anyways, if you want to see, uh, you can, this is a good website if you want to see charts and see, see what's happened with the current and the, the value in relation to each other. And there's uh, other links here of exchanges. Um, you can make your own watch list. Uh, it's, it's a good website. Um, so um, that's the uh, CoinMarketCap website. Um, back to the presentation. Shows over 5,000 cryptocurrencies, many are mined. Okay, there's two basic kinds of cryptocurrencies. The ones that are mined and the ones that are just created by the bankster thieves. The mined ones are the ones that I don't, I don't, uh, well, if people give me Ripple or Cardano, and people have given me those, I'll take them. But um, I usually don't keep them very long and, uh, and convert them into uh, a mined crypto. Uh, the reason, uh, well, we'll go into how the mining works. Uh, some of the uh, uh, Ripple, Cardano, and others are bankster created. It's like the dot-com craze of the 90s. Anybody that was around, uh, there, was, there was many of those dot-coms that, that went just crazy, and, and then they became worthless overnight. And so uh, you can expect the same thing will happen. And uh, yeah, yeah. And so... Uh, like Amazon and eBay are, are still around today and many of them are gone too, many of those dot coms. Yeah, and this is CoinMarketCap, we just looked at it. So, like a little comparison. Um, this is gold and silver, okay? Uh, can be counterfeited. Uh, it's not infinitely divisible. Uh, there's no authenticity verification, you just have to you know, uh, there's really no guaranteed way to know for sure that you have real gold or silver. I like to buy um, U.S. minted coins like gold eagles or silver eagles or pre-1964 quarters, dimes, half dollars, those kinds of things. Because the Secret Service hunts down those kinds of people that counterfeit that stuff and they get to spend time in Crowbar Hotel for 30 years. And so, but otherwise, if it's just a silver medallion, 
that's supposed to be pure silver and you pay 20 bucks for a silver medallion and it turns out that it's pot metal or something, your only remedy is to sue them for the damages for the 20 bucks. And you got to take it into court and spend all that time and effort. I mean, so it's hardly worth the trouble. Um, so um, that's why I like the, uh, I, I only buy um, either um, US minted coins or I also buy Republic of Texas silver because I know that's not fake silver. And so I know the people that sell it and, um, and they get it directly from the mint. So uh, I do buy Republic of Texas silver, but that's the only silver bullion that I buy because otherwise you just, there's no guarantee. Uh, storage, it can be lost or stolen. Portable, it is, but it's not that portable. You know, you can't go and buy something from some guy on the other side of the planet. It's recognized, definitely recognized, but not necessarily accepted. Um, taxes, yes and no, okay? Um, theoretically, they're not supposed to tax it. Some states do when you buy, like Texas, if you buy silver less than $1,000 worth, uh, they'll tax you. So you have to buy more than 1000 Anonymity, yes, it is anonymous. Federal Reserve notes. It can be counterfeited. It's not infinitely divisible. There's no authenticity verification. There's counterfeit money all over the place. Storage, it can be lost or stolen. It's portable, definitely portable. It's recognized everywhere. There is taxes, although they're not supposed to, but you basically have a bunch of thieves in government these days. Anonymity, maybe. Some banks require ID for any cash deposits or transactions over certain limits precipitate reporting requirements. So it's not necessarily anonymous. Cryptocurrencies, they cannot be counterfeited. It is impossible because what happens when, when with Bitcoin is mined, well, we're gonna go into why it's impossible to counterfeit. Uh, it's infinitely divisible. It is uh, right now, um, a Satoshi is 0.000000 to see it's uh, 0 0.01 to the six, six decimal place, six or eight, one of the two, six or eight. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Anyways, that's a Satoshi. That's currently the smallest uh, increment of Bitcoin. And right now, um, Bitcoin is like, um, uh, for a dollar is like, um, you know, 15,000 Satoshis or something like that. So. It's, it's definitely more divisible than you'll ever need right now. Now uh, with Ethereum, Ethereum actually goes to like 12 decimal places. So the, well, they can adjust that. You know, if it gets really expensive, they'll start adding digits to it. And, and uh, um, anyways, so it's, it's definitely infinitely divisible. Authenticity verification is completed when you use it, okay? You have to understand that uh, Bitcoin that's what mining does, okay? You have millions of miners around the planet that are doing mathematical calculations. And well, I, I need to get into that when I start, because I have a certain portion of this presentation that talks about how cryptos are created. Um, anyways, so uh, authentic, authenticity verification is completed when used. They cannot be stolen from a wallet, but they can be lost. If you lose your private key in your wallet, then it's gone it'll be gone forever and nobody will have access to it. So it can't be stolen, but you can lose it. It's portable, yes, completely. You can buy something from someone on the other side of the planet, it happens all the time. It's recognized um, and it's growing. There's more and more companies that are accepting Bitcoin. You can buy, there's a gold, a gold company, a precious metal company here in Dallas. It's the name of that company off the top of my head, I can't remember, but they accept Bitcoin. Uh, taxes, nope. Um, although they may charge you a tax, it's a sales tax on buying something, um, but, but there's certainly no tax for you on using the crypto. Anonymity, yes, some more than others, okay? So you have to understand, I'm sure you've all heard of the blockchain, which, which millions of computers have this blockchain on them, and that's, that's basically a part of the mining process. Well, blockchain is a public key and an amount, that's all it is. It's a distributed ledger and millions of computers around the planet have it. And that's what Bitcoin is. And so 
That's why it can't be counterfeited because all of these computers are sharing information. And so if you hack one computer, all the rest of them are gonna say, there's a problem here. You know, there's something wrong <laughs> because, because you gotta hack them all at the same time, which is literally impossible. And so it can't be counterfeited. And, and so on, on most cryptos, the blockchain is public and I can show you websites. We're gonna go into that. I'll show you some websites that, that show the blockchain. And so you can see those transactions happening right now in real time. And so um, the uh, people, computer nerds, can go to those transactions and find out IP addresses and kind of get an idea on, on, on where that transaction was from and where it went. And uh, nothing for sure, okay? But if they find a lot of transactions and they start doing some research on some other websites, they can put two and two together, and, and it's not as anonymous as you would like. It's pretty anonymous, but computer nerds can find out that kind of information. Now, but there are cryptos that are completely anonymous, okay? There's one called Monero, and there's one called Cloak, and those are completely anonymous. There's no way that anybody can find out anything about them, and uh, that I know about at least. And so there's some that are completely anonymous, and uh, but the blockchain um, is definitely in the public, and and so Monero and Cloak are both mine, so those blockchains are in the public. So I don't know exactly how they encrypt them or what they do, but uh, but I know that they're anonymous. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Engineer Win. Don't forget to follow me on Steam it at Sovereignty International. Don't forget to like this video on YouTube. Don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. And on Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. This is the front page of my channel, my YouTube channel. And you notice that the subscribe button is already clicked because otherwise it'd be red. And then there's arrows pointing at the bell. You gotta click the arrow or the bell so that, um, and, and a pop-up will come up and wanna know if you, uh, want notifications and which ones. Um, anyways, so uh, mine cryptocurrency. It's because of the blockchain. And a blockchain is a distributed ledger. It's all it is is a database. And it's it's getting pretty big, in fact. And that's one reason that Bitcoin is slowing down. It's, it takes a while sometimes, especially if, if the internet is slow or if there's a lot of transactions going on. It takes time. Sometimes it'll take a half hour, uh, and it depends on how much of a because all of them have a little fee that you have to pay to uh, to do the transaction, and so um, it, you you can vary your fee. Okay, they call it juice, and so if you have if you pay a generous fee, then they'll move your transaction along fast, and if you don't, then it might take a while. Sometimes I've seen it take, and when when uh, when there's a lot of activity and the internet's slow, it might take a day for that transaction to complete. And um, then, and so there's a public key and a private key. The public key is in the blockchain. Private key is your key. That's your access to that. You don't lose that. You should. I print those things and I have them in a file. And and sometimes I email them uh, to myself because I have a lot of email addresses. But that's uh, that can be. Uh, um, um, a compromise to security. So you have to think twice about doing that unless you have a, a really secure email. A blockchain is a public key and an amount. That's all it is, a public key and an amount. Uh, this is Etherscan. And uh, let me see if I can... Uh, find it. That was one thing I should have. Well, let's just do this. There we go. There it is. This is Ethereum. This is the uh, transactions. So you have a to and a from. And that's it. And an amount. 0 0.088 Ethereum, that one. Latest blocks, okay? The blocks are rewards. The miners get blocks. These are transactions that are sent. And these ones over here are blocks 
that are um, for the mining, okay? And so that's uh, the block number and then the miner pool, spark pool. So there's mining pools. I'm a, I'm, I have a subscription to mining pools. I do some mining. Um, this is one of my uh, mining uh, accounts that I have set up. I mine uh, Digibyte and I mine, right now I'm mining this flow because it's, um, it's a better, <laughs> A better, um, um, better. It's more uh, uh, worth. Uh, it's better value. Let me put it that way. If you go here, this is a website called Coin Wars, Coin Wars, and and cryptocurrency mining profitability results. So uh, what they do is they calculate the cost of electricity and and. Um, decide whether uh, it's worth it to mine and the cost of the coin and how quick you get, uh, how easy it is to get the, the, uh, um, the rewards, the, uh, um, the blocks. Okay. And so, um, and they calculate um, which ones are the most profitable. And uh, so Florin coin is right up here. And so, um, and that's assuming $5 and four cents worth of electricity based on, you know the um, the and three dollars and six cents because but foreign coin you have to understand is is um, 0.014 Bitcoin, which is um, uh, it's it's like uh, it's definitely it's about two cents a coin in Federal Reserve notes is what it is. Um, anyways, so uh, the other one I like to mine is Digibyte which is down here a ways and Digibyte, you actually lose a little bit. And uh, that's another one I like to mind. Digibyte's been improving lately though, it's going up in value. But what will happen quite frankly is that as it goes up in value, more people mine it. So then it gets harder to get the, the uh, rewards. And um, so it's six and one and a half a dozen the other, you know what I mean? Uh, anyways, so uh, let's go back to the uh, presentation. So as with cryptocurrencies, um, my way of selecting is, first of all, you got to remember caveat emptor, buyer beware, do your own research. Is it mined? I, I don't have cryptos that aren't mined um, because I'm not interested in playing the bankster scam. And in fact, um, while well, we're going to cover that, I think that the bankster ones could be the mark of the beast. It's hard to say. Some people think that uh, because to begin that's it's because out of ignorance, in my opinion, th that Bitcoin is going to be the mark of the beast, and I don't think so. But certainly Ripple or uh, Cardano, they might be. You never know. They're bankster ones. Uh, anyway, so do your own research. Is it mine? Is it a debt to somebody? Uh, bankster paper currency is always a debt to somebody. Bankster cripple currency, cryptocurrency, Ripple and and Cardano has an infinite supply, it can be created only by them. And then uh, Cliff High has some good resources about uh, with his data sets. He uh, has a web bot that goes out and scrapes the internet and he's been doing that since the 90s anyway. So he uh, makes future predictions and he has some pretty good uh, uh, accuracy, although the timing uh, is not necessarily uh, that accurate. Um, but, but uh, he's got some pretty good information. And again, come to your own conclusions, whether you want to accept him or not. At any rate, um, I use a lot of his information. His, his, uh, um, he puts out these, um, these reports. And, um, and, and so I, I use those to uh, bare naked wealth reports, he calls them. <laughs> Anyways. And uh, so I use them to give me ideas on which currencies to look at, but I still do my own research. So this is Bitcoin mining chart. And if you see here, it started in 2009 and, and it, it goes for, at the beginning of Bitcoin, the creator chose 50 Bitcoin to come into existence every 15 minutes, okay? So you have these miners that their computer is performing calculations and every 15 minutes, they award 50 bitcoins. That was when it was first started in 2007, uh, 2008. And, uh, and so then uh, 2,625,000 bitcoins were created in the first year. 
every four years, the number of Bitcoins that are mined are cut in half. So then in 2012, it was a halving. And uh, uh, the number of Bitcoins were cut in half to 25 every 15 minutes. In 2016, the number of Bitcoins was cut in half again. Um, and so then every 15 minutes, there's only 12 and a half Bitcoins created every 15 minutes. So you think about that, what that's doing is there's a certain, there's a certain demand out there. Initially, there wasn't much demand. There was quite a few coins. And, uh, but now the, there's more and more demand, more and more people are accepting them. And, but there's getting to be less and less coins that are created. And there's the, ex the existing ones are still out there and people, maybe the people lose their keys and, and lose them and who knows what happens. But so the bottom line is, is that the new supply is dwindling. And so then in 2016, it went, it was cut in half to 12.5. That's another halving. And there's going to be a halving here in about 15 days. And that's in 2020, of May of 2020. The number will be cut in half to six and a quarter every 15 minutes. And the, in 2140, 21 million Bitcoins will have been created and no more Bitcoins will ever be created again. So then we'll go back to this chart. 2140, so it's going to be every four years, it's going to get cut in half. So right now we're in 2020, which is right here. So it's going to be get less and less. It's a recipe for the price to go astronomical. And um, McAfee, the guy that um, McAfee uh, virus software, he, he says that he would eat a part of his anatomy if Bitcoin wasn't a million dollars by the end of 2020. So I guess we'll see whether he has to eat a part of his anatomy. <laughs> I, I think he'll back off on that one, but he, he it could be, you never know. And, uh, and even if it isn't, uh, I'll bet it won't be long till it is. Uh, anyways, crypto mining uh, currency mining uses processed processor time to crunch numbers. You can buy mining computers and mining cars, cards for desktop computers. The best mining computers are also good gaming computers with powerful video cards. Let me see here. I think I'll just do a little quick search on uh, eBay. You can see what a mining setup looks like. Yeah, these are miners right here. Um, that's that's a D three, thirteen point five terahashes. That probably will wind up. Let's let's. Um, well, first of all, there we go. There's a, there's a sophisticated mining rig, okay? 12 slots, they use, they, there's the cooling fans, there's, um, and that's bidding, okay? So you don't know what, what, what it's gonna sell for, but there's-, there's, there's Hey, Glenn. A, yeah. Uh, are you, are you uh, sharing something? You can't see Other it. than your cryptocurrency uh, presentation? You can't see it? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, okay. So I got to change it every time. This is uh, eBay and uh, I'm showing some miners. There's a mining rig. There's actually, it's just a, a setup with a bunch of uh, miners that are like this on a, on a stand and they're all hooked together. But this is actually, this, this one looks like it's, uh, um, could be motherboards, or not motherboards, uh, uh, video cards. Um, let's look at it closer. Right. So what they do, see these are all video cards and uh, they have their cooling fans and the power supply and and uh, they'll they'll be crunching numbers to get uh, rewards see here's another picture so you can spend a lot of money on setting up a mining rig 
but um, but the, these are different kinds of uh, mining rigs that are available. <clears throat> and um, these are just a standalone miner. Some of these miners easily go for a couple thousand bucks for some of the, something like this. The, oh, this is an S5, that's an older one. But, but this one here, Thirty-two terahashes. You know that one. I, I could see it going for a couple grand at least. Uh, Aladdin T1. Let's see what a completed listing says for that. So, Yeah, I spelled it wrong. Wow, it's only 400 bucks that are coming down. Yeah, that one sold for 400 bucks. Plus, um, that's cheap. Wow, that's cheap. 32 terahashes too. Wow, that's, that's crunching some numbers, let me tell you. Anyways, um, and then uh, you might have missed it. <clears throat> The, uh, this is the uh, uh, EtherScan website. These are actual live transactions that are happening. These over here are transactions, and this is mining. And see Havion pools, the mining pools. And so these are blocks that are rewarded. And, um, and that's in Ethereum blockchain. Um, anyways, oh, and then this is my, um, this is uh, my, uh, one of my uh, uh, subscriptions. Uh, this hash the coins. Let's refresh it. Yeah, see, it's it's the digibytes. Uh, I'm actually mining floor uh, floor uh, flow right now. Uh, here's my workers, and yeah, so it's um, and those are the balances. But uh, anyways, and then uh, in case this is the website that I go to, Coin Wars that talks about the different kinds of cryptos and how, uh, whether the value is in relation to, uh, for the mining, whether it pays off. And uh, like one that I'm doing right now is this flow. And then uh, uh, Digibyte's another one that uh, you actually lose a little bit on. Uh, but anyway, so let's go back to um, this one and then we'll, uh, I'll share that back. Okay, so um, cryptocurrency mining uses processor time to crunch the numbers. You can buy mining computers and mining cards with desktop computers. The best mining computers are also good gaming computers with powerful video cards. Video cards, for some reason, are really good for mining. Mining costs power, okay, so you gotta use up electricity. Country with low power rates have a lot of miners like Venezuela. There's YouTube videos, lots of YouTube videos of mining setups, all sorts of interesting stuff I'm telling you on YouTube. This is what happened in the Bitcoin having in 2012. It was around $10. Bitcoin, uh, you know, it, it's 2012 is when the halving happened, but it doesn't, not much happens for about, it takes about a year and a half for it to do this. So it went from, from uh, you know, probably about $10 up to $260, so that's a pretty good rate of return. And so the key is to, uh, to sell it before it, it drops. But, uh, um, and then, so then, this is what happened in 2016. Um, and uh, so then the price of Bitcoin was, looks like a little under, it's when it halved right here, well, let me see here. I can find out. This is live um, trading view. Here's 2016. So in, this is in the summer 2016. So it was about 500 bucks for a Bitcoin in, in June. For and one? for one Bitcoin, yeah. 
and it went up to uh, it went up to uh, it was around nineteen thousand dollars. It was over eighteen thousand, so five hundred to eighteen thousand. So that's a pretty good rate of return. And so uh, a lot of people are expecting it to do similar things. Um, but it takes about a year and a half. So before it really, before it peaks. And so it's going to be a ride, especially with all this stuff going on. You know, I'll bet you it's going to like... Um, Right now, this is a uh, trading view. And uh, I want to go back to where I was showing. So 2016, and it was, it had in the middle, in the summer of 2016. So we'll say around here. So that's where it was about. And then it went up to over, it was around uh, 18,000 and change when it peaked. And, uh, and then it went down. Right now, Bitcoin is at, this is the daily candles. And uh, right now it's at 75.61. So uh, right now you're getting, it's a uh, pretty good strong, these are uh, uh, up candles, okay? The way the candles work is if it's, the, the, uh, the bottom of the body of the candle is the entry, these are daily candles. So at the beginning of the day, where it was at that point in time is the bottom of the candle and where it is at the top of the candle as the end of the day. And the wicks that you see, these little lines, those are areas that it traveled to that were outside the, the body of the candle when it, during that day. So people, you can read this stuff like um, this is the 50 day moving average and this is the 200 day moving average. And so, Right now, it's above the 50-day moving average. And if you look back here, when it was going crazy, it was above both of them. So that's what you want to see it do is get above both of them, and then it's time to buy. <laughs> but, you know, uh, right here, it was briefly above both of them, and, then, and it wound up going down. So, again, there's more than just that to look at. You see what I'm saying? It is, except that trading on the stock market, they do naked short selling and all sorts of stuff. And so, um, you know, it's rigged. The stock market's rigged big time. I don't, I don't, I used to trade on the stock market, but uh, I don't anymore because it's rigged. And you don't, there's no way that you can. Yeah, well, there's people, Darren's brother makes good money in, in, in options. So if you know what you're doing, but you gotta, you gotta follow the herd. You see what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta know what the uh, Goldman Sachs and those kinds of people are doing because they, they basically run the market. And so, but it's still rigged. And so you can still make money, uh, but you gotta be in tune with what they're doing. And so you basically go along for the ride and when they make money, you make money. And so, because you're doing the same thing. So is this spend your money or is this just to make money? Well, you know, again, it's up to you. Um, I, I, I'm planning on making some money, but um, of course, um, it's also because I don't want to participate in the in the fake system, and or I want to participate in it as little as possible. And so, I'd rather have if and more and more people accept Bitcoin, then I can just use my Bitcoin. It's relatively anonymous, and uh, and and I I. You know, if I send somebody $10,000, I don't have banksters chasing me down wanting to know what I'm doing with my money. You know what I mean? Wanting an ID and all sorts of crap. Anyways. So what do you do? You take it from what you make and you put it in your wallet? Is that what you do? Yeah, I'll show you. We'll get there. Yep. So it's called Bitcoin, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is called blockchain, uh, blockchain technology. Um, it's a, I want to make sure I'm looking at that and I am. 
it's it's uh, they yeah, they all have a core software. In other words, Bitcoin will be Bitcoin Core, Digibyte will be Digibyte Core. Okay, and that's basically the software you need on your computer to mine it. Okay, and so that's what makes the blockchain. The blockchain is what we saw on EtherScan. Okay, it's a website, so anybody can access those blockchains and they can see the transactions that are happening and who, which addresses are getting what. And, uh, and so um, anybody can look at that information. There's Bitcoin Core, there's Litecoin Core, there's, uh, they all have their own, the mined software, mined cryptocurrencies all use a core software. And, and those core softwares are operating on hundreds of computers all around the planet. Uh, Bitcoin Core contains every transaction that has ever taken place. It's encoded into the blockchain, okay? So you look in that blockchain, every transaction, that's the reason what happens is after a while it starts operating pretty slow because those files get huge. And, uh, and if you download the core software, like if you download Bitcoin Core and you want to mine it, it'll probably take you a couple of weeks to download it. You see what I'm saying? And so um, it gets, because this, the file so huge, it takes a long time to download it. There's millions of computers around the world that have Bitcoin Core running on them. It's impossible to counterfeit a mined cryptocurrency. Now, in the 1800s, there was a solar flare that set telegraph stations on fire. It's called the Carrington event. It was like uh, during the Civil War, or shortly after the Civil War. Uh, anyways, so you gotta think about what happened, okay? So you had this solar flare that was so powerful and it hit the earth in such a way that it came down to the surface of the earth and it was hitting the only thing that conducted electricity at the time and that was telegraph wires. And it was sparking off of those telegraph wires, wires with such ferocity that it was set the telegraph, anything uh, flammable nearby, it set it on fire. And so that's the telegraph stations. And so, um, if it happened in the 1800s, it can happen again. If that happened today and it hit this part of the earth, all of these computers here would be history. Our cars would be history, okay? They wouldn't start. You couldn't run them. They'd be like boat anchors. We'd be walking. And, uh, and so uh, if it happened here, that's what would happen. Um, but on the other side of the planet, all the computers would still be running. Okay, and if you think about it, and the reason I talk about that is because some people say, well, what happens if the internet goes down? Well, you know, actually, it could in some, some parts of the planet, but it's not going to go down all over the planet. And so um, there's always going to be a computer that's got that software on it. And even if it did go down, then there's, there's, there's going to be a computer that you can access the hard drive. And, and, and get it going again. You see what I'm saying? And, and if, it, if it did go down and completely wipe everything out, we'd be back in the Stone Age anyways. So uh, anyway, so, you know, uh, a lot of people will say, you know, what if the internet goes down? If the internet goes down, the government goes down. Anyways, this is my mining um, site that I do. And there's a lot of mining sites that you can go to to uh to mine bitcoin or or whatever you want to mine this one i don't mind bitcoin i mine digibyte and flow because the blockchain because of the blockchain it's possible to find out information in other words how much bitcoin was sent to a given bitcoin address because of privacy concerns uh, other cryptocurrencies like monero and cloak have been created and, and they're supposed to be completely anonymous. There's uh, some cryptocurrency exchanges, Poloniex in Delaware. It's owned by the banksters. I think it's Goldman Sachs. Cryptoly and Cryptology in New Zealand is bankrupt. Coinbase in San Francisco. Um, I have a Coinbase account and there's many more. Uh, they can be hacked. Now, um, matter of fact, they, uh, in the, uh, in, um, I think it was 2010, there was a uh, cryptocurrency, um, or maybe it was 2000, it was around 2012, if I remember right. 
but there was a, uh, uh, an exchange called Mount Gox that they claimed got hacked. And what most people think is that, the, again, these exchanges are like banks, right? So they have all sorts of people leaving their currency, their cryptocurrencies on there. So they, they show that you have the currency in the account, but do, does, is there a separate wallet that has that in there? No, that's not the case. And so they are literally spending your cryptocurrency. And then if you decide you want it, then they give it to you, but they take it out of the pool. And so what my point is, is that um, it's no different than the banksters, what the banksters do. That's the reason I don't keep money on a cryptocurrency exchange. I buy my cryptocurrencies and I put it, send it to my private wallet immediately. I never keep it on their exchanges because you're asking for it to get to be gone. And what happened was that Mount Gox exchange got hacked and or they claimed it got hacked because that's their only explanation. Oh, well, we can't find, we're, we're run out of. And what happens is say, for example, um, maybe the price of Bitcoin's going down and people are taking all their cryptos out and they, they don't have all of it because they've been spending it. You see what I'm saying? And so, um, so that's what they do anyways. So uh, cryptocurrencies on an exchange are an account, they're a contract and bankruptcy, you can lose your coins. Bank accounts can be hacked and if banks go bankrupt, you lose your money. That's not FDIC insured. Um, there's decentralized exchanges. One's called Shapeshift and another one's called Changely and there's other ones. And a lot of those are associated with wallets. And uh, I like using those because they're completely anonymous. If you use Coinbase or Poloniex, they want to know your life's history. They want a government issued ID card. And, uh, but, but the advantage is, is that you can access a bank account and transfer money out of the bank account over to the exchange and, and buy some cryptos. And then I immediately get it out of there. But, the uh, um, the drawback is is they want to know who uh, they want to see your government issued ID card and they won't let you do anything there if you don't provide it. With uh, the decentralized exchanges, it's all anonymous, and and there's a lot of wallets that uh, that you have that um, uh, you can exchange cryptocurrencies right in the wallet. Like the wallet might give you. Uh, let you have uh, Digibyte and Bitcoin. And so then you can exchange the Bitcoin for the Digibyte or the Digibyte for the Bitcoin, you exchange them back and forth. They charge you a fee, but it's done right in the wallet and it's completely anonymous. And so the, 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 a lot of the wallets have that capability. Um, so there's different kinds of wallets. There's websites that you can go to that talk about the best wallets to get. Uh, there's a lot of wallets, and so you got to do your own research again. Uh, one that I have is Coinomi. I also have Jax. I also got Exodus, and there's dozens of wallets that are available. And some cryptos, like um, Cloak, is only available on one wallet. You can't get that on another wallet. Uh, of course, that was way back when, when I had Cloak. I don't have any Cloak now, so it might have changed. Um, and then there's Cold Storage. People talk about cold storage. Well, cold storage means that it's not on the internet. And um, like, a, like a thumb drive or a treasure. I like using an old cell phone. Um, this is a treasure. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's a, it's, it's a cold storage wallet that is not on the internet. So if it's not on the internet, it can't be hacked. Um, so the old cell phone and... and um, it's, this cell phone is actually activated. I'll show Donna since she's here. Oh. Right here. It's a S6 Edge Plus. Now you'd have to turn it on and then you'd have to get into it to be able to use the wallet. But you but, just have a wallet on there, that's all? Yeah. Well, no, I, it's an activated phone. Oh, okay. So I can make phone calls on it. I can send texts. I can do all that stuff. So the iPhone on there. Uh, iPhone, you can use it. You can use an old one. It's an it's 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 
Um, right. Right. Yeah. And so, but you could use a phone that's that's not even activated, right? You use the Wi-Fi capability. And so then you log into your home network or you go to McDonald's and log into their network. And then you go and download the, the app and, and you send the, the cryptos there. And it's all completely anonymous. Um, install the Coinomi app or the, the Jax app or the Exodus app, whatever app you want to use. Cryptocurrencies are kept in the blockchain. You have to understand that. So I could take this phone. It's got a wallet on it. It's got more than one. I could take this phone and drop it in a bucket of water, and it wouldn't make a difference at all because, because the, the cryptos are kept in the blockchain. As long as I have the private keys for those wallets, I could buy another phone, download the app, and, and insert my private keys, and it would all be there still because the cryptos are actually in the blockchain. And, and it, it doesn't matter that, that that phone gets dropped in a bucket of water. It's on millions of computers all around the planet. So it's not just one computer, it's millions. That's why I say it's impossible to counterfeit. As long as you have the private key, you can get access uh, to the cryptocurrency from anywhere on the planet. If you were traveling internationally, there's uh, stories about uh, customs officials uh, wanting to uh, 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 question people about their cryptocurrencies, right? And all you'd have to do would be to uh, email yourself the, the, the private key. And then when you go through customs, before you go through, you reset your phone so there's nothing on it except what the original stuff was there. First of all, I'd never let them search my phone anyways. But, uh, but even if you did, you just reset your phone so there's nothing on there. And then once you get to where you're going, you log into your email, you get the private key, you download the app, you uh, um, uh, access your cryptos, and you can do whatever you want with them. So anyways, it's amazing the, the freedom that it gives you using cryptocurrencies. Litecoin is, there's a Litecoin is another cryptocurrency. It's probably, well, let's see here. Let's go to coin market cap. I think it's over here. Let's see here. Yeah, Litecoin is the seventh biggest market capitalization, 2.8 billion. Is so Litecoin is a pretty good crypto. It's it's not the biggest one next to Bitcoin, um, but it's it's up there. Lynn, at the congressional session, you were talking to somebody about cryptos, and you mentioned a crypto that started with the letter A that sells at that time, you said was around six and a half or seven dollars. What was the name of that crypto? Uh, I don't remember. I slept a couple times since then. A. Yeah, I, I just vaguely overheard it. I wasn't even aware of what you were actually talking about. But yeah. I remember hearing you say that and you said to somebody the fact that, you know, it's only like six, six and a half, seven dollars, something like that right now. But it had been previously up around four hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, maybe was that Vertasium? What is it? Are, is, are you thinking of Vericasium? Um, that could be. I don't know. I, I thought it started with an A, but yeah, I could I be wrong. I don't remember talking about, I mean, there's no cryptos that I know about that start with an A uh, off the top of my head. Do you know one that's around 6 or $7 right now? Vericasium. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'll let me, look that up. Let me see. Vertasium. Well, Cliff High says it's going to be worth more than Bitcoin. Yeah. So. And so it's real low right Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably a good 
yeah, it's 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 like um, see, there's a coin market app that you can put on your phone too, and and so I I watch them on my phone. Veritasium is six dollars and forty six cents right now. So uh, oh, anyway, okay, that that was probably the one then. Um, Litecoin is another cryptocurrency. Litecoin is scheduled to create 84 million coins and gets halved every four years, just like the other ones. Um, Cliff High said that his data set showed Litecoin being one quarter of the price of Bitcoin. Uh, right now, Litecoin is, whoops. Forty-four sixty-nine. So if it was right now, if it was a quarter of the price of Bitcoin at Bitcoin's current price, Bitcoin is at seventy six hundred. So a quarter of that I say is eight thousand. That means that Litecoin would be at two thousand, right? So it's got as a percentage, and that's what happens when Bitcoin really starts moving. The alternate cryptos move way more. And, uh, and as a percentage, you see what I'm saying? So the key is to pick the right ones. And, and you know, quite frankly, when Bitcoin's really moving, you could pick even the worst ones and probably make out like a bad one. <laughs> I mean, you know, what was happening last time? I'm telling you. Anyways. Yeah, what I would do is, because is, there's actually a dollar based coin too. There's one called, uh, uh, U.S. dollar coin. Uh, let me. Um, what just happened when the dollar starts? What happens when the gold back dollar comes out? Is it? I don't know. This is Coinbase. There's a U.S. dollar coin that Coinbase actually created, and it's actually exchanged on the, at a lot of locations. So it's supposed to be stable at one dollar. Now it might go up a little bit and down a little bit, but it, they usually keep it pretty close to a dollar. So then when the other ones are going up or going down, that's what I do is if something's tanking or going up or whatever, I usually try and time it and I'll buy US dollar coins. You know, if I think it's gonna go down, I'll buy US dollar coins and then it goes down, then I'll buy the crypto back. See what I'm saying? And you can, a lot of times you can do that inside the wallet, like uh, Exodus wallet allows you to do that right inside the wallet. But again, you're speculating, you know, so it's something that um, um, Yeah, there's 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 Coinbase and um, um, so It's a US dollar coin right there See I could buy them and I can take it out of my Bank of America account right now Here's the volume on Coinbase. This is a circulating supply, 751 million US dollar coins. So there's a lot of them out there. Anyways. Um, so, uh, um, Amazon is looking at accepting Bitcoin. This was something that came out probably about a year ago now that Amazon was looking at accepting uh, Litecoin. And Litecoin is very fast. They use the Lightning Network. It's called the Lightning Network. And uh, like if I sent some Litecoin to someone, within seconds, it would show up in their wallet. It's like really fast. <coughs> And uh, remote viewers have said that there will be announcements in December of this year about the Lightning Network. And so I think, and I don't know for sure, but I think that it's probably going to be something about Amazon, you know, adopting Litecoin or something, you know. I guess we'll see. Anyways, um, I have exclusive content available on my website and on Patreon. Uh, my website has two subscription levels and I accept cryptocurrencies. Uh, my basic subscription level is $29.99 a year for the videos only. 
and $49.99 a year for the videos plus unlimited consultations. Now, my unlimited consultations do have their limitations. <laughs> In other words, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm an attorney. No, I'm a liar. And so but I can tell you what I would do under a certain circumstance and where to find forms. The only power that these new world order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception. And my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit, that I cannot fight all the battles. I need people knowing what the issues are and being on point. And so um, I appreciate all of my Patreons and I uh, haven't been able to publish any videos, or very few lately, uh, because you know, let's face it, I don't want to say stuff I've already said. I want to have some new uh, technology, some new things to publish on. And so um, that's why I'm, I'm, I got some videos that I'm doing. Some of them might be tonight, some will be soon. And so uh, there's some new ones I'm coming out with. And um, so I appreciate everybody's patience on my Patreon and on my website. And I'm coming out with some stuff uh, that I think will be worth the wait. Um, Anyways, so, um, and, and, uh, but even then, if you want to buy a subscription as a donation, it's a modest donation. There's no doubt about it, but everything is appreciated. Uh, and, um, and, uh, you know, it's all appreciated. Uh, anyway, some of my exclusive website uh, and Patreon content is Arlington Private Information Share. That's nine videos by itself. Land B training. There's like three videos on that. There's a stopple certificates training, foreclosure estoppel certificates training. Corporate denial training, toll roads notice and demand training, invoice training, notice of void judgment training, revocation of signature training, third party witness training, and federal habeas corpus training. There's also revocation of voter registration training. There's uh, criminal complaint training, lawsuit training. I've got a lawsuit training video up. And then any other training, um, I'm open to any other ideas that people might have, as long as it's not something I've already covered. Uh, and there's also Northeast Private Information Share videos. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free on my two private groups um, at, uh, at, uh, at groups.io, actually, is, uh, they're available there and on my website. All exclusive content is on my website, and you can buy a subscription there. And there's a link to my Patreon um, uh, channel. Um, so when you send cryptocurrencies, there's a fee. There's always a little fee. They call it juice. Recently, somebody sent me $125 worth of Litecoin, and the fee was like less than it was less than 30 cents. And so there's there's crypto exchanges charge fees. They're usually pretty cheap. You can you can buy cryptos like for a half a percent. You can buy cryptos on on uh, crypto exchanges. They're cheap, but I think a lot of it's because they rake people over the coals for IDs. And uh, they, it's certainly a lot less than uh, uh, buying it at a Bitcoin ATM. And we're going to cover that in a second, too, because you can buy cryptos on a Bitcoin ATM. Anyways, and there's lots of them around. Um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are infinitely divisible. Uh, they have kilobits, which is thousands of a Bitcoin or 0 0.001 Bitcoins. And it can go smaller as needed, millibits, gigabits. Uh, Satoshi is point zero 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 zero. It's eight eight decimal place. Point zero zero one Bitcoin. That's a Satoshi, and a dollar right now is like fifteen thousand Satoshis. If you, it's right around there. So it's it's well below a penny. Um, but once Bitcoin starts going crazy, um, you know they'll just give it more decimal places. It's not a debt to anyone. It's impossible to counterfeit. But it can be lost if you lose your key. There's a, there's a public key and a private key. So the, the public key, everybody sees it's your private key that you have to treat that like gold. My contact information, uh, sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com is my website or my blog. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group on uh, Facebook called Sovereignty International is being deleted, although I haven't even been on there in months. And as Facebook as it has been, I don't even go there anymore. Uh, my Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. 
Uh, and I've also got an administrating your public servants at groups.io since Yahoo quit, uh, uh, deleted all my files. I put a, I put a bunch of them up at, at groups.io and I've also got uh, a bunch on my website. Follow me on Twitter at Engineer Wynn. Follow me on Steema at Sovereignty International. Uh, I've also got a BitChute uh, channel, but BitChute doesn't allow me to upload anything bigger than a half a gig. And so um, I don't have all my videos there. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm opening up uh, uh, channels on uh, uh, LBRY Library. And I've also got a Brighty on channel on uh, Mike Adams' website. Um, but uh, none of those have, have complete sets of videos. Uh, and also Patreon. And there's my Patreon, and I appreciate all my Patreon subscribers, and I appreciate their patience. I'm gonna, I've got some stuff. This one's going to get uploaded here pretty quick. And um, so is the, um, the uh, um, Form 1020 video. Uh, whether we do it today or another day, it's going to be up there pretty soon, too. Um, Bitcoin ATMs, okay, uh, you can buy, um, uh, usually like there's a lot of ATMs where you can buy Litecoin, but usually there's not a big uh, variety of different kinds of coins. You can buy Bitcoin and Litecoin and maybe Bitcoin Cash. Usually, I mean, I, I haven't seen too many with anything else in those, uh, but, uh, um, and they charge a minimum of 6% up to 14%. So Think about it, 6% fee on 200 bucks is 12 bucks. That's expensive, especially when you can buy $200 worth of Bitcoin for, on Coinbase for a half a percent. And so, um, so the, the Bitcoin ATMs have that to compete with, although they're quite anonymous. And you know, they, they have cameras, they're taking your picture, and they usually make you uh, give them your phone number, and then uh, they send you a text, and you have to give them the code out of the phone. And so they're, they're kind of verifying you to some extent by doing that, although that's still, um, it can be pretty anonymous if you have, say, a junk phone or something like that, um, a burning phone. Um, so there's, there's ways of maintaining your privacy if you're really uh, uh, serious about it. Uh, but anyways, um, but the fees can, can be pretty high. 14% on 200 bucks is, uh, is over 20 bucks. Right, and so um, um, uh, whereas if you go buy it at Coinbase, you have to give up ID and all that stuff, but uh, but it's a half a percent. They also sell a Bitcoin over the uh, uh, current market price at, at the ATMs. A lot of times you'll wind up paying over two hundred dollars over market, so they they kind of it's expensive. Uh, but I've used ATMs, um, and you know everybody's got to decide you know how to what extent they're going to do it. Uh, some want to take a picture of identification. I, I, there was one that did that, and I walked away from that one. It's, but ATMs are actually quite easy to use. Most of them only sell the Bitcoin. You cannot, um, you cannot um, uh, sell your Bitcoin to the ATM and get cash. Um, they don't, I've never seen one that does that. Uh, some of them uh, say they'll do that, and they're probably around, but they're kind of few and far between. But they definitely, you can feed your money into the ATM and get, get them to send you Bitcoin. A lot, there's lots, they all, all do that. They all do that. There's YouTube videos that go through it in detail. So again, YouTube is the place to find, you know, your instructions if you're looking for how to operate or uh, how to do an ATM. A lot of times on their own website, you go and find out your ATM that you want to go to and there'll be a link to a, a, a website and, and then they'll, they'll have a, a YouTube video on how to run the ATM when you get there. And so this is the DFW area. And these are all uh, Bitcoin ATMs that are, uh, this was back, you know, I don't know when. This was probably a couple of years ago when I, when I took this image. Uh, but they're all over the place. You know, you see here in Dallas, in downtown Dallas, there's six ATMs down there. And there's two over in this area of, uh, of Arlington. And there's three over here in Fort Worth and another two over here. So they're all over the place. And actually, there was one that, um, that I went to that's not even listed, but I found it over. So there's, this isn't the only website you can do to search for ATMs. So again, um, 
This is just a website that you can use to search for ATF. There's other ones. And so uh, again, um, there's, there's actually, you know, I found an ATM that was like a block away and uh, from where I was standing and, um, and it worked great. And so um, uh, Coinbase now wants identification. When I first set up my Coinbase account, they didn't. And, um, and then all of a sudden they wouldn't let me do anything until I provided them identification. And some wallets provide for buying Bitcoin with a credit card, but you know, um, I, I'll bet you, you know, they usually want information that I'm not prepared to give. And so, um, especially with a wallet, because because that's that's where I'm keeping it. It's on my phone or something like that. And so I don't I don't I don't do that. And so many cryptocurrency exchanges have ways to buy cryptocurrencies with credit cards. Coinbase does. And, and matter of fact, they all do, really. Um, there's uh, bitquick.co, there's buying cryptocurrencies other ways. They charge about a 1% fee that does not require an identification for the first small transactions, but eventually they'll want to see some ID. Yeah, um, they provide a bank account at a bank of your choice, and then you go and deposit cash, and within three hours, the Bitcoin's in your wallet. So it's all part of the process on how you do it. And, uh, and there's other similar websites. This is bitquick.co, but the, the, yeah, .co, I think. Anyways, I bought, I bought some Bitcoin on here. And, um, you know, we can go to a Capital One or a Bank of America and, and, and give them that. That was before, uh, you know, they've been getting stricter and stricter over the years about stuff. And that's the reason I like I doing cryptos because once it's a crypto, I mean, it's wide open. I can send a million dollars if I have it to the other side of the planet and nobody's the wiser. And um, none of the damn business. Anyways, here's another one, local Bitcoins. And so you see that uh, you can do a cash deposit. So there's similar deals, but there's also people that, that you can buy and sell Bitcoins. And um, like, like they'll, have, they'll have people uh, that will sell you up to say $2,000. And uh, there's a friend of mine that used to buy $3,000 of a Bitcoin and he would do it like two or three times a week. He had some money in the bank. And so, uh, and he was doing it like uh, from one guy, he'd just go and meet him and peel off the hundred dollar bills and the guy would send him a Bitcoin and that was it. Thanks. Have a great day. The guy be armed <laughs> in Phoenix. That was in Phoenix. Eh? Everybody's got guns in Phoenix. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Check out my other videos, Banks to Thieves playlist, Roman cult playlist, bankrupt corporate so-called governments, bar members one through actually five now. Do it yourself, I'm not the volunteer for the selective service and draft, martial laws here, do it yourself, no income tax, do it yourself, free mail, do it yourself, kangaroo courts one through 17 now. And the Canada Border Pigs playlist and bar members and their satanic connections playlist. So, uh, Congress passed a law that uh, on how the border uh, um, pigs are asking people about their cryptocurrencies when crossing the border. And number one, I do not give evidence against myself. If you want to, that's your choice, but I don't. If you're an American, then under Article 5 on Amendment, you have the right not to give evidence against yourself. So if you've got a court order, that'd be my answer. And then uh, if you're not an American, then under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 17, no one shall be subjected to arbitrary or unlawful interference with his privacy, family, home, or correspondence, nor unlawful attacks on his honor and reputation. Everyone has the right to protection of the law against such interference. So if you've got a court order, that'd be what I'd be saying. If you're worried, email yourself the keys, delete all your wallets off your phone, reset the phone before you go through customs. There's nothing for them to get. If you have properly backed everything up, you should be able to go uh, to restore everything after you get past the custom pigs. Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult. Congress equals Roman cult equals bankster thieves. Uh, uh, and a pig is persons in government who intend to perjure their oath. Order followers, are, uh, uh, which are Satanists, uh, see Mark Passio's YouTube channel, and there's a link to it, um, of what on earth is happening, uh, which is Mark Passio, brilliant guy. Anyways, um, John Adams, second president of the United States. My history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities and is very particular and very horrible. 
Their, their uh, restoration in 1814 is indeed a step towards darkness, cruelty, and despotism, and death. Uh, and I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits, as there was a body of men who uh, merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell. It is this society of Ignatius Loyola. Within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. Kings and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. So, and that's uh, Roman Catholic Archbishop James E. Quigley uh, in the Chicago Daily Tribune, May 5th, 1903. And there's uh, the pimp. Well, I meant the Pope. No, the pimp uh, visited Congress. And um, so, uh, and so that was 24th of September, 2015. That's a QR code. And that's how you send and receive Bitcoin. All crypto wallets generate a QR code. You, you know, I can tell you where you probably saw one was in uh, Walmart. When you check out, their little checkout uh, electronic thing there has a QR code. They always have those things there. And so all crypto wallets generate a QR code. You can send money using the QR uh, crypto um, address for the wallet or the QR code. The uh, camera on your phone, scan the QR code and, and, and put it all in your, in your phone. You can send crypto cryptocurrency from one phone to another phone. I could, we could do it right here in this room. Uh, or, or you can plug in the code and send it to someone on the other side of the planet. And um, transfer uh, cryptocurrency between two people with no internet using a cell phone. Two people can literally anywhere, one foot apart or opposite sides of the planet. Uh, QR code one foot uh, apart. And then you'd have to type in the, the, the uh, public key um, for someone that's on the other side of the planet, obviously. Uh, it's not a debt to anyone. It's impossible to counterfeit. It's infinitely visible and circ circumvents the bankster thieves. Advantages of cryptocurrency. You can now get Visa and MasterCard debit cards that can be loaded with cryptocurrency. There's new cryptocurrency products being introduced every day. Every day more merchants accept cryptocurrency. And there's a crypto stores directory. I think that's, is that still up there? Yes. And uh, Cliff High says that something will cause a bond market crash. Well, I think we're going through that something right now. I think that will cause a bank holiday. And so um, possible. When the banks close for a period of time, people can still use cryptos. Okay. And so I don't care what the banks are doing. And so as long as you've got cryptos, you can go and spend it. And the price of cryptocurrencies doesn't matter because they're infinitely divisible. Cryptocurrencies are about to go up a lot, in my opinion. And again, that's my opinion. And then there's a story about the, the uh, 10,000 Bitcoin pizzas, $80 million pizzas. This is on Investopedia. May 22nd, 2018 marks the eight year anniversary of the first Bitcoin transaction in which a Florida man paid for two pizzas with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. The day uh, has become a part of folklore, not because of the transaction, but more of the price. The man in question paid 10,000 Bitcoin, which today is worth over $80 million for two pepperoni pizzas. On uh, May 22nd, 2010, now known as Bitcoin Pizza Day, Laszlo, whatever his last name is, agreed to pay 10,000 Bitcoin for two delivered Papa John pizzas. Organized on Bitcoin Talk Forum, the Florida man reached out for help, I'll pay 10,000 Bitcoins for a couple pizzas, like maybe two large ones, so I have left over uh, for the next day. Uh, it's like, I, I like having leftover pizza to nibble on later. You can make the pizza yourself and bring it to my house uh, or order it for me from a delivery place. But what I'm aiming for is getting food delivered in exchange for Bitcoins where I don't have to order or prepare it myself. Kind of like ordering a breakfast platter at a hotel or something. They just bring you something to eat and they're happy. So and that's, that's, that actually did happen. Bitcoin and any other cryptocurrency is not a forced loan. Uh, Bitcoin and any other cryptocurrency is not legal tender. You do not need it to be legal tender. What you use is up to you as long as the other guy agrees to use it. That's all that matters. It's called barter. You should, have, you should still have lawful money, gold or silver. Uh, gold markets and silver markets and all other markets are rigged 
by the exchange stabilization fund. Many cryptocurrencies are manipulated, but the level of manipulation is far less than other markets. There's no doubt they rig crypto markets. Um, this is the last Bitcoin halving in 2016. And so the last Bitcoin crash was caused by the Mt. Gox trustee. Remember that Mt. Gox uh, Bitcoin exchange when they went bankrupt? Well, they got put into bankruptcy. The Mt. Gox trustee is the guy that's liquidating everything so we can settle the account. When they sold millions of, of dollars of Bitcoin several times in preparation to settle a bankruptcy. Vic Weir has videos about it and shows the days that it happened, the move in the markets and the press releases showing what the Mt. Gox trustee was doing. Bix explains that normally that would be done privately to prevent the manipulation. They deliberately drove the Bitcoin market down. And that's what caused this, okay? That's what caused this right here. Mt. Gox trustee. Um, Revelations 13, 16 to 18, the mark of the beast. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand or in the foreheads that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score and six, 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 six. Revelations 13, 16 to 18. Some people say that Bitcoin is the mark of the beast or will become the mark of the beast. I don't think so, quite frankly. The mark of the beast could be related to a cryptocurrency. There's no doubt about it. I think if it is related to a cryptocurrency, it would be Ripple or Cardano. I think that the mark of the beast has more to do with the social security number or maybe even a vaccination record that Bill Gates talks about. They're talking about forced vaccinations, and if you don't have proofs of vaccination, then you may not enter into any government building. Gee, it's not a big leap from government buildings to commercial buildings like stores and malls. And so you can see that happening, but that doesn't mean that me and you can't do a private deal somewhere and, and, uh, and, and all the rest of it. So anyways, that's the end of this presentation. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Um, does anybody have any questions? How about the, the participants online? Do you guys have any questions? If I had them, I had them during the talk and I didn't want to interrupt you to ask them. And now I forgot them. <laughs> oh, well, I think I right. well covered all the stuff anyways, but uh, yeah. So, uh, but if you have any questions, I'm willing to entertain them. So, do you have to have a smartphone in order to have a wallet? No, you can use your computer. I have a wallet on my computer. Oh, okay. And again, as long as you keep the private keys, your computer can fry and you can just buy another computer or a phone. I like a phone and the reason is, is an old phone. I have an old phone that I have in a, in a briefcase and I have it put away and it's rarely turned on. But once in a while, I turn it on. Um, usually, I like with I use this phone for uh, like Coinbase. Okay, once in a while, Coinbase will kick me out and say we're going to send you code, and so I tell them to send the code to this phone, and so then I have to turn it on, <laughs> so I can read the code and put it into the into the uh, to the uh, the computer. But but that's about the only time I ever turn it on. It's got like about uh, one hundred and fifty dollars worth of airtime available because I never use it. And, um, and you could use, you know, uh, you can buy like uh, Darren has all sorts of old smartphones that he sells for like 20 bucks if you want one. And so it's, it's that, that treasure that I showed, those things sell for over a hundred dollars. So, um, and all they're doing is, is it's offline. And so my phone, this old phone is offline too. It's turned off, it's put in a briefcase and I forget about it. And, um, so it's it's impossible to hack. If anybody wanted to get into it, they'd have to know the password to, to get into it. And, and the only way they can get into it is with that password. Otherwise, you know, they could reset it and then they could probably, if, they, if I lost the phone, they could reset it and use it for their self. But, uh, but my cryptos wouldn't be lost because I have the private key put away somewhere and I would just go and get another phone and uh, and download the app and and put in a private key and everything would still be there where it was all the time i 
I don't think they can track your keystrokes and my phone, I don't log into it with keystrokes, remember? It's on the screen. That's why I like that screen. There's no keys. And so they really can't, it's, it's a pattern is what I use to log into my phone. And so um, there's no keys. It's not like a laptop that has keys. You see what I'm saying? Well, they could be listening to us right now. There's no doubt about it. Um, and so uh, um, what's his name? Snowden talks about that. But um, the way you get your cryptos into your wallet is you either buy them in an exchange or at an ATM or you go on um, like um, um, Craigslist. There's people that sell cryptos on Craigslist. And so then you basically have to find someone that's or on eBay. Anyways, you have to find someone to sell them what you want and go and meet with them and where you give them the cash and they send you the cryptos. You see what I'm saying? And you sit there and uh, we used to, we bought, I bought cryptos from people and I sold them cryptos. And what we would do is we would sit there, they'd give me the cash or I'd give them the cash. And then uh, if I sent them the cryptos, I'd sit there and wait until they got it. And um, uh, that's the nice thing about Litecoin is it happens pretty fast. You're not waiting for half an hour. <laughs> but if it was Bitcoin, who knows how long you're going to wait. Tell them. So do you normally buy your uh, coins on Coinbase? Um, I do because it's so cheap and I'm real cheap. And I've already got that account set up anyways. But I, I, uh, I, the only thing I do is buy it there. I don't sell it there. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I do sell it. But when I, what I do is I buy it and I send it off of there. And then if I do sell anything there, I send it there as something else. So there's no real way of knowing, you know, like they can't say that I bought Bitcoin at this price and, and then I sold it at this other price that was where I made a whole bunch of Federal Reserve notes. See what I'm saying? Because I bought... I. And, and so who's to say if I didn't have the Litecoin all the time that I sold? You see what I'm saying? There's no way of, of having some sort of uh, um, um, a record of it. Of capital gain. So I agree. I really get upset with it too. But, you know, now that I got this Coinbase account set up, they haven't bothered me. So, you know, and then plus what I've done is I've filed criminal complaints against them and and sent it to the U.S. attorney and the attorney general. And, and so they, I'll bet you they got word. And so they kind of leave me alone too. But I don't know for sure. Uh, but they haven't messed with me. So, um, but the way you get it is either an ATM or a Coinbase or Craigslist. Those are probably the easiest, simplest ways. That's true. Or private deal. If you, like you could, you could put an ad on Craigslist saying, I buy Bitcoin and, and wait for people to come to you. That's what people do. If people want, they put an ad saying, I buy Bitcoin. And if I want to sell some Bitcoin, then I call them up. I got some to sell. Have you got, uh, I got a couple hundred bucks worth I want to sell. Sure. No problem. Go and meet them for some restaurant or something and of course nowadays with all this shit going on you're not going to meet them at a restaurant you have to meet them outside the restaurant <laughs> so so you can buy a portion of a bitcoin <laughs> oh yeah well bitcoin's seven thousand dollars so you're going to have to right. buy a portion unless you're going to have seven thousand cash and i would never that's one thing that that you should be aware of is um the fbi does things where they'll 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 go out and they'll say they'll they'll uh, say they're selling some Bitcoin or no they'll they'll buy Bitcoin and they'll tell the guy they're buying it from that this is drug money. If they ever do that, you walk away because it's probably the FBI and they're gonna sting you um, for money laundering. See what I'm saying? And so so you never ever do that. You you tell them. Well, if you're if you're messing with drugs, I want nothing to do with it. Have a great day. I'm out of here. And and don't ever don't ever buy that kind of because that's money laundering is what it is. And so um, 
they've they've actually stung people doing that. And and you got to keep your transactions so they're not too big. You know, I would say I wouldn't I wouldn't do more than a couple thousand cash. I mean, I don't even have that kind of cash anyways. But uh, but if it came to that, there's there's a guy I know in Phoenix that that, that does three thousand. So, you know, theoretically that's safe, but that, a lot of that depends on who your local officials are and how, how much of a jerk they are too, you know what I mean? Right. But no matter what, if you're buying any cryptocurrencies, you have to have a wallet to put them in. <laughs> yep, it's true. So, so then you have to, get some form of a wallet and have it set up before you can buy anything? Well, when you buy it at an ATM, they give you they give you a wallet, but I never keep it there. I always send it to my private wallet. Um, how do you how do you go about getting your private wallet? You just download them on on uh, uh, on your phone. Uh, or, or you install it like Exodus is a is a program that you can install on your computer. That's a wallet. Um, just go to the website and download it, install it on your computer. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah. There's actually yeah. That's that's what I would recommend is go to Google or or a search engine and and do a search for ten best wallets. And and read the articles and 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 open them and maybe even download them and and install them and 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 kind of get a feel for them whether it's something you like. I like Coinomi because it has a lot of different cryptos on it. You can have a lot of different cryptos on that wallet. And then and Exodus the same thing and Jax. You can all all of those have a lot of different cryptos and all of them you can exchange them for other cryptos in the wallet without. Uh, with the uh, uh, um, with the anonymous exchanges, with the um, what do they call them? Exodus, Coinomi, and Jax. The, the decentralized. Decentralized exchanges. exchanges. Yeah, right. And so, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So, so I like I like either of those. Um, there's probably other ones that do the same thing. I mean, I don't, uh, there's certainly, there's things that are changing. There's new stuff all the time. Yeah, right. Yeah, right on your phone. Well, when we end this, anybody that's recording it, it's going to take a while for that recording to, uh, 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 transcribe over to a I think an mp4 is that right so it doesn't it's not oh it's an mp4 so it's a video okay good so you mean we have to stay here online for a period of time well no because I think you can stop at any time and it'll just resume the next time you bring your computer on oh okay yeah, well, when you go to open that file it's going to tell you it's got to be it, it, does, it doesn't take very long. It, it takes just a minute or two. So, but I have to leave. I can't shut Zoom down until I download that file. In. Well, when you leave the meeting, it'll it'll tell you that there's a recording being uh, processed or something. Okay. okay. And as soon as it's done, you can shut it off completely. Okay. But, and it really doesn't take long. I mean, it ones I've done have taken two or three minutes at most. Okay, uh, so you guys got any more questions then? No, that was great. I'm good. Thanks. Very good, Glenn. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It's, um, um, yeah, if you, I mean, you know where I'm at if you have any questions anyways, but I just download the apps. I use Coinomi. I use Jax. I use Exodus. Um, and, and again, because they have decentralized uh, exchanges that are associated with them and they hold multiple kinds of currency, but they don't necessarily hold all of the ones that I like. Like for example, Veritasium. The Exodus wallet has Veritasium, but you can't exchange it on Veritasium. You have to send it somewhere else to exchange it. And, uh, and the other wallets don't even have Veritasium. And, and I like Veritasium. Um, and the reason I like Veritasium is because Cliff High said it's going to be worth more than Bitcoin. So there's 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 a lot of upside potential. You know, I like I like those kinds of. Can you like buy it, put it somewhere, and just let it keep growing? 
Yeah, well, that's what you essentially do, right? Okay. So it grows what in the fall? Well, it doesn't really. What it does is it just sits there, but the price on the market goes up. You see what I'm saying? It's just like stock. Okay. So it is still not a bit. Right. Well, it's actually, it's it's not a, a my attitude. is It's HODL, okay? HODL stands for hold on for dear life. <laughs> That's what I kind of feel like right now. <laughs> I just, I just hold. <laughs> but, but some of my cryptos, like, like Litecoin right now is climbing real nice. And, and even Veritasium, I used to have a lot more and, and I bought it. I, what happened is Veritasium went down to like under $4 a share, a, a, a coin, right? And so I bought like, you know, um, 500 coins. When that happened, I bought, I spent all of my money on Vertasium. I sold my Litecoin, I bought Vertasium. And, um, and then it went up to like $12. So I made 300%. So I went and sold a bunch of it. I took profit. You see what I'm saying? And, and so, so I didn't sell it all, but I sold a bunch of it. I still got a couple hundred of them, but I sold a bunch of them. I took my profit. I basically uh, got my investment out of it. And no, 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 I bought other cryptos. <laughs> but you could if you needed to or wanted to. Sure, yeah, I'd use Coinbase for that. Because once I transfer it to Coinbase in a day, it can be in my bank account if I want it in my bank account. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So once, I once. I want to be able to do that. Right. Money if I right. 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 And Coinbase, within a day, you send it there and transfer it to your bank account the next day, it's in your bank. Matter of fact, it's a lot faster to get it from Coinbase to your bank than it is to get from your bank to Coinbase. It takes a week to get from your bank to Coinbase to where they release it. What they do is when you buy something with Coinbase, they hold it for a week. And, and so you can't transfer it out. You can exchange it on Coinbase for something else if you want, but you can't transfer it out until that week is up and then you can transfer it out somewhere. But, um, um, so they, they, they sit on it for a week. They won't let you transfer it out. I think that they're leveraging it or something, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, it's a bankster. They're banksters again. Right. But so, so, um, well, you yeah, but I, I deal with them as little as possible and, and I have, I don't have anything on Coinbase right now. It's all in my private wallets. I'm planning on buying some here probably, you know, in the next few days. Um, but you know, we'll see. Yeah. Well, it's gotta be money. That's, uh, you know, that I don't need to survive. Yeah. I, I keep some stash, I call it, and and um, when it's enough there that that I can afford to put some in the cryptos, then I do it. Yep. So, anyways, that's about it. All right. Well. I'm going to upload this. It'll be on YouTube eventually. Right now, it's gonna, I'm going to upload it, and, and it'll go to Patreon because um, I give my Patreons first crack at it all. And, um, but eventually, it'll be on YouTube. You may want to uh, 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 delete the first part of it because it's nothing but a bunch of garble of us here talking before we started. Yeah, I'll 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 listen to it and cut out the stuff that I don't want, uh, you know, available. I've got a YouTube a video editor that were, is a pretty good editor, and I can cut out stuff from that that I want to. Hey, Glenn, congratulations! For I what? never heard you say pigs or anything like that tonight. <laughs> I did. I call them border pigs. Remember? <laughs> you did. Yeah, I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> See right here. Yeah, persons in government. Persons in government that intend to perjure their oath. <laughs>
So anyways, all right. Well, sounds good. I guess we'll uh, stop the share.